Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explorers. My name is Kay Slater and I am the uh, gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts. This is uh, season two of Art Starts Explorers, our province at play, which is our uh, weekly uh, workshop. And we are halfway through our month exploring textures together. This is week three of us exploring textures. And even if you haven't made it to the first two, uh, first two weeks, that's okay. There's something new for you to explore today. And you can always go back and check out any of our previous workshops by visiting artstarts.com slash explores dash online. If you're joining us on Facebook at sat on Saturday at 11 a.m. because there's always something happening on our Facebook page on Saturdays at 11 a.m. Um, we have all of our videos archived there for the live watch party. I'm there in the comments, commenting live. You can ask me questions. But if you're joining us at any other time, you can always uh, leave a comment, uh, share something that you've made at home. Even if you didn't make it at, um, at one of our workshops, we'd love to see what you're making at home. Um, and you can also check out all of our videos, all of our previous season um, and all the previous weeks of uh, season two of textures at youtube.com. Okay, so we are on week, as I said, week three of uh, textures. And before we get started, um, I wanted to go over the three rules that we have for uh, exploring together. And if, if this is, if, if you've been here before, you, uh, you're probably already an expert or you're already, uh, you've already practiced this a few times, but if this is your first time here, let's go over this together. So the three rules of explorers, and this is rules we use loosely just so that we're all kind of thinking in a similar way while we're making together. Um, the first is to practice respect. And I use that word practice because some weeks we're better at it than others, and that's okay. We're allowed to make mistakes, um, but the whole goal is that we practice until uh, we get really good at it. So we practice respect by checking in with ourselves. How did we sleep last night? Did we get a chance to have some food before we made today? Are we feeling grumpy? Are we feeling excited? By being able to check in with ourselves, uh, we can communicate to other people what we're making together, how we're doing. And then we can offer that same uh, respect to each other. If you're making with other people, wherever you are making right now, you can ask them how they're doing and then they can also uh, let you know so that everybody's kind of aware how everybody's feeling as they're making together. If somebody's uh, feeling grumpy or they didn't get a lot of sleep, they might not want to talk very much while they're making. That's okay. Just knowing um, is a good way to practice communication. We practice respect by respecting our tools, and um, part of that is using our tools safely um, and properly so that we don't hurt ourselves or others, cleaning up our tools if they get messy while we are making, and then putting them away when, they're all, when we're all finished. And then also if we're making with other people, sharing our tools, communicating if somebody wants to borrow some tools, um, and uh, yeah, that's a way of respecting ourselves and our tools. Another way of practicing respect is by uh, thinking about, about knowing the land that you're making on and acknowledging the land. And so where you can see me making my hands and, and my artboard here, um, I'm making from my studio, which is on stolen or the unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, and in particular, the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish people. And um, the way that I practice respect is by acknowledging and thinking about how I am an uninvited guest in my, in my studio right now um, and have the privilege of making on these, uh, on these lands with you. And, um, and so I thank the, the uh, land keepers and the water guardians um, so that I can be here and I can be sharing and I can be making with you today. So those are some ways that we can practice respect. The, the other two uh, rules are very exciting when it comes to making because when nothing is for keeps, which is rule two, it means that all of a sudden our recycling bin 
is our art store. We can take things from there. We can take paper that has uh, writing on the back of it, paper that we find around the, uh, the classroom, around the house, around a community center, wherever we find paper, all of a sudden, any spots that we can find um, to make a mark or to rip paper or to fold it up become something that we can use while we're exploring. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not for keeps. And it also means that when we're all finished, we can take it apart and we can put it back in the recycling bin or put it in the garbage or get rid of it properly. Um, and the cool thing about that is that when nothing is for keeps, we don't have to have expectations. If we have, what I mean by expectations is if we have an idea or a picture in our head of how something is going to turn out, we can be really frustrating or frustrated if it doesn't turn out the way that we expected or the way that we had that picture in our heads. So if we don't have any picture, if we're just exploring together, we're using a creativity flashlight to ask questions as we go along and we're exploring a cave of our imagination, all ideas are good ideas. Even if you can do something really well, what happens if you try and do it badly? If you're really, really good at something, try to do it bad. If you've always drawn with a certain color, try drawing with a different color. You'll learn things new by trying new things all the time and try to practice surprising yourself. If you know what's going to happen when you make something or you do something, then you've already practiced that before. Try something new with us today and try to surprise yourself. So those are the three rules of explorers. I'm going to push those over to the side just because they're with us in the workshop, but we want to have a bit more space for making. And so as I said, this is week three of textures. And so in the previous two weeks, we've talked about how texture is a feeling or the appearance of a surface. So that's when we're touching something, um, uh, when, when we, um, we can actually feel the, um, the surface of something and make and describe it. So is it smooth? Is it rough? Is it uh, leathery? Um, is it spiky? Um, one of the other ways to describe texture is also the consistency of a surface, sorry, of a substance. So what I mean by that is if you had a cup of orange juice, you might be able to touch, touch the top of orange juice, but it would probably have the same feel. And, and if you're not gonna have, if you're not gonna drink that glass of orange juice and you're not doing it to somebody else's orange juice, try it out. If you can take a small little thimble full of orange juice and touch the top of it or stick your finger in it, does it feel any different when you stick your finger in the juice versus on the juice? And I've tried it before. And I can tell you, I didn't notice a difference. And that's because all throughout um, this, the orange juice, it might have something ha like pulp or it might have fruit in it. And so it's all throughout the substance. And so that's the consistency. I can say that the consistency of that solution, of that juice, is pulpy. And so that's another way to describe texture. And so this week, what we're going to do is after exploring some deep looking in previous weeks, some tracing, some rubbing, uh, pattern making, what we're going to do this week is we are going to explore one of my favorite things to draw and to make um, um, with some of the things that we have learned is making trees, is drawing trees. And so while we're online, we might have uh, people watching us from, uh, from all over the world. But uh, if you are on uh, Coast Salish territory like me, um, you might be familiar with some of the trees that I'm going to refer to today. But if you're coming to us from somewhere else, I'd love to hear about the kind of trees um, that you have locally. So before I get started making some trees, I have a couple things on my art table today. You saw them, I have my scissors, but I don't think I'm gonna use my scissors today. I do have some paper though. So if you can go find some paper and you can see this is just ripped paper that I had um, just available for me to, to try some different things out. You can go to your recycling bin. It can have words and stuff on the back of it. It could be a drawing that you, you made in the past um, and then you can draw on the other side. So do you have some paper? And then do you have a mark making tool? And by mark making tool, um, whether that's a pencil, whether that's a pencil crayon, whether that's a marker, whether that's a crayon, whatever it is, uh, go and grab yourself a mark making tool. I'm going to use a marker this week. And for me, that's going to be a little bit harder because um, it's harder to draw detail and um, smaller detail with a marker than it is to do it with a pencil or a pencil crayon. Look, see, I'm kind of stuck by doing a really thick line um, when I do a marker 
versus a pencil or a pencil crayon is a little bit easier to get small, uh, small details. But the reason that I'm using a marker is because there's a bit more contrast. It's a little easier for you to see when you're looking at what I'm doing through your screen. And so I'm gonna use a marker, but I acknowledge that this is probably gonna be a bit more challenging. It's probably gonna be a bit more difficult. All right, so if you have your paper and your mark making tool, let's get started. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use trees as a way of exploring texture um, as a method or as a way of telling a visual story. And so what I mean by that is let's start by drawing a tree. How do you draw a tree? So before I get started, take a second, and um, if you're still thinking about it, maybe close your eyes while you, uh, while you listen or pause the video um, until you can think of a tree and then draw a tree. So I'm gonna draw a tree now. All right, does your tree look the same as mine? Does it look different? How is it different? How is it the same? Have you ever seen a tree that looks like this? You may have seen a tree that looks similar to this in the past, but you probably haven't seen this exact tree. And the reason is, is because this is just a simplified or an icon of trees, right? And so what I mean by icon is that this could be any tree, any tree that looks like this or, or specifically is um, a deciduous tree. Um, so a tree that loses its leaves. Um, and so when, we're, uh, w when we do a simplified drawing of something, the more simple it is, the fewer details that we have it allows it to be a symbol or it allows it to be a picture of all trees. Um, what I mean by that is, is that maybe this is, so we, we might all recognize that this is a tree, but is this also a tree? And this might look more like the tree that you drew. Right? So that's still a tree. Drawing the tree like this doesn't make this one any less of a tree. It's just a different way of making a simple symbol or a version of a tree. And so what does this have to do with texture? Well, when we're looking at this right now, we can, we can take a couple of clues. We can, we can start to build some story out of these two different things. So when I look at the point or the pieces or the edges of this uh, coniferous tree, the one that has the, the uh, cones on, the pine cones, and so this one being probably having needles, um, it's got these, these points that I, I drew there, right? And so I can get the impression that this probably has sharp or spiky or pointy textures, right? So this tree has those kind of textures. Whereas this one over here, because it's this big kind of cloud with all this white space in the middle of it, this, this tells me that it isn't a coniferous tree. It probably is a deciduous tree. It probably tells me what time of year it is because it probably isn't the winter if it still has all of its leaves and has this big, nice canopy over here. It tells me that maybe there are things inside of this. I don't know what kind of leaves. I, I don't know what kind of tree it is um, as far as maybe a alder or a maple or a fir tree. I just know that it's basically a, uh, a deciduous tree. And I know this is a coniferous tree. And I know this one probably has sharp and pointy edges and that this one doesn't. So there's some parts of the story that we can tell by just creating that simple icon. But now let's think about textures when it comes to trees and see if we can make a more detailed story just by adding in some some of these textures. So let's start with a let's start with a trunk. And so whether you decide to go down the path of uh, drawing details on a deciduous tree, um, sorry, a deciduous tree or a a, a conifer tree, um, it's up to you. But I'm going to start this way. I'm going to start with the um, with the deciduous tree. 
And so I'm gonna start by doing a, a big trunk. And I'm gonna do something similar where I'm gonna just do that simple outline again. Now I'm just gonna go bigger here so that you can see it nice and big. Okay, so same thing as before. The only information we have is, is that is that this is a this is a trunk. In fact, is there any reason why it couldn't be um, a conifer tree in that in that case, right? Um, we don't know. All we know is that there's a trunk and that there are some branches. So the first thing that I'm going to think about is, or I'm going to imagine, and if you've never had the opportunity to touch a tree before, next time you're out at a park or um, if you have permission to go up and touch a tree or if you're walking down the street and there are trees um, on the street, go on up and touch the side of a tree. What does it feel like? It's probably gonna feel like it different every single time depending on the kind of tree you have. If you walk up to say a birch tree, and birch trees tend to have um, trunks that are more like this, right? Kind of skinny and then a few smaller one, uh, smaller uh, branches up at the top. Check it out, just by drawing two different trunks, I'm already starting to tell a different story. Birch tends to have really smooth um, bark as well, especially the, uh, the, paper, um, the paper birches that we have um, in the Coast Salish territory where, where I am. Um, but I don't wanna draw a birch, I wanna draw something different. So I'm not gonna draw a smooth trunk. I wanna draw something maybe maybe a red cedar or a, um, or a horse chestnut tree. So I've, I've touched those before and I know that they kind of have a rough texture to them. How can I draw a rough texture on a tree? Well, I know that coming to a point like this gave us this idea of sharp. So I don't want it to come to like a really hard point like this. What if I did a bunch of softer points? What do you think? Yeah, I feel like if I was going to run my finger along that, that it would probably have a rough texture. And just because I put my hand down the, the center of the tree, it doesn't mean that the outside of the tree wouldn't have that. So I'm going to go back over the outside of my tree with that similar kind of um, rough line. There we go. And so now it looks like, now it's starting to look like there's some texture, right? And now it's, it's definitely telling me that it's not a birch tree. It's not a tree that has um, a smooth, a, a smooth surface. And it's probably also telling me that this is probably more like a cedar with the long lines of bark because if you've ever had a chance um, to check out the bark on a cedar it's usually these like longer strips uh, of um, of bark and so I'm already starting to tell a story just by adding one two three four lines and making decisions of what kind of texture those lines are going to have before I I started drawing I'm going to keep going I'm going to add some more texture to these other branches here And you know what, there was something else that we figured out by those points being sharp. If you've ever had the opportunity to go camping before, or you've ever um, watched a show where there's, um, where there's somebody camping, you may have seen somebody grab a stick or a twig, and whether they're gonna use that to, to carry around with them. Um, but if they're at a, at a, um, a fire, right, a campfire, maybe they'll put a marshmallow on the end of that stick, right? And so they, they're gonna want a sharp or a pointy edge so that the stick can go through the marshmallow. And so I know, because I have toasted marshmallows and I've toasted hot dogs in the past on a campfire, that sticks usually come to a point, to an edge, and sticks are on branches. And so because I have that experience, and because I know that, I'm going to add some branches that end in sticks, right? And so I'm gonna bring them to a point. And did you see I kind of made wavy lines as I made those branches there? 
because I was trying to show that bark because the bark comes up onto the sticks as well, right? And so I, I, I made not smooth, right? Not smooth lines. I wanted to add texture to them. I'm gonna keep going. Add a few more branches here. There you go. And then maybe there's some in the background there. Bring it back and color those in because they're in shadow, they're behind me. There we go. All right, so while we're thinking about branches, because we've already figured out the, the texture of the bark, and actually I'm gonna bring the bark up onto those branches because the bark is everywhere. Oh, do you notice something else I'm doing? I'm going really fast now. What's the difference when you add texture slowly, like these lines down here, versus when you add texture fast? What changes? Check it out. What do you notice when you draw texture fast versus texture slow? Okay, so I've got a couple of, of these here. Um, I wanted to I wanted to think for a second, what if somebody had cut off one of the branches? And so maybe there's a branch down here that had grown out really, really big, and maybe it's beside a sidewalk, and so it was getting in people's faces and they had to they had to cut off one of the branches so that it was safe for people to walk under. I just made a story before I even drew something on there. I made, I used my imagination to think about how this tree would be in an environment. And so by adding detail, by adding texture to my drawing, I'm continuing to tell my story and the story of the life of this tree. Okay, so I've decided that there's going to be a branch here that was cut off, right? So there's, there's part of the branch, and I'm just gonna leave it there for a second. So if it was cut off by a saw, how is the end of this going to, uh, going to look? It's probably not going to be pointy, right? It's probably going to look different. And if I want it to look like it has a smooth finish to it for where it was sawed off, and if you've ever had the chance to see um, a tree when, it, when it's been cut, you, uh, you might know that the inside of trees have rings, right? And so, um, you, know the, you know, the way of telling how old a tree is, is that if you can count all the rings, you know um, how old it is. Um, but if that's, if that's um, where it was cut off, what did I do here that was different from these lines here? I used a smooth line. I had a couple of lines or a couple of squiggles along it. They weren't perfect. They weren't machine circles. So that it had kind of an organic or a natural uh, feel to it. But I also closed all of these circles. For all of these kind of jagged marks over here, I didn't really make a shape out of any of them. I just kind of went in a jagged um, and uh, rough way. But for this, it kind of implies that it's smooth because all of these lines have, um, ha are connected. They're a closed shape um, and they're multiple closed shape. None of them are intersecting with the other. So it's just this nice clean cut. So if I wanted to put this over here, I've got this, I've got this rough bark on the outside of this tree branch here. And now I'm gonna add my cut off. I'm not going to put my rough edge around the outside of this circle because this is where it was cut off, right? It, the, the, the bark ends. And so there we go. I'm telling, I'm telling a story of this part of the tree by showing that smooth line there, by adding the detail of the texture that, that it ends in a smooth, sharp, um, so not sm uh, sharp, but a smooth end to that branch where it was cut off versus any of these branches up here that came to a sharp point. All right, so we're continuing to tell a story. Is there any more story that we could tell about this, um, this trunk, about the, the, um, the base of the tree before we go up to the cloud-like canopy? Well, what if this tree had, um, had a big branch at one point right here and there was a storm one year and the branch fell off and what had happened was 
um, underneath where the roots were, maybe didn't get enough water in a section, or maybe a family of squirrels or rabbits um, or rats or any, any creature had burrowed up underneath the tree and had started to um, build a little nest or a nook in here, right? And so now all of a sudden there's this hole in the middle of the tree. And so this hole probably has some texture around the outside of it where the bark has started to grow back around the outside edge. So it's not a smooth hole, even though the branch broke off, it wasn't cut, right? It wasn't a man-made cut or a human-made cut right there. It's still going to have kind of an organic or spiky edge around the circle there. And I'm gonna continue to put my bark around the outside with kind of some scribbles that I think look rough. Here we go. And then on the inside of this, I, I'm gonna look into the, the tree here and what am I gonna put there? Actually, I'm gonna leave it there for your imagination. Um, does it have, what's the inside of bark look like? If you've ever had the chance to look at the inside of a tree or if you've ever been able to uh, see bark that has fallen off a tree and you never wanna peel bark off a tree, right? Unless, unless you know a lot about trees, unless you um, are, uh, unless your um, nation practices uh, using the bark in a respectful way, unless you have gone to school and you know about how to respect um, trees, you don't want to pull off bark. But if you go um, walking through a forest or walking through a park, oftentimes you can find bark that has fallen off a tree on the ground. And so you can turn it over and you can look at it and you can run your fingers along it. Is it smooth? Is it rough? Is it leathery? Have you ever touched leather? Does it feel leathery? Is it smooth? What, what is it? Try it out, use your fingers and see if you can tell the difference between the outside of the bark and the inside of the bark. So I'm gonna leave that open right now for you to discover um, and you to fill it in however you want, whether with your brains or whether you copied this drawing and you're drawing it yourself. Oh, I hope the noise is, uh, is okay for you. It sounds like there's some construction happening outside of my studio right now. Um, I'm gonna keep going. So we've drawn this trunk here and we've got all this, we've got this story happening about this, this, uh, this rough um, textured tree here. Now let's start to talk about the leaves or the canopy of that tree. And so because I have these icons up here, I'm gonna take another piece of paper. There we go. And this is a place that if I, uh, if I wanted to, I could use my scissors. And maybe you've got a big piece of paper and you don't have your icons drawn up here. If your surface looks different, that's cool. I'm just gonna move this over to the side so I've got a bit more room. And I'm gonna take another piece of paper. And I'm gonna put it behind the, uh, there you go, behind the trunk where we're already working. And now I have a whole new uh, area to keep drawing. Okay, so when we were looking at the icons um, over here, we, we made this kind of, or I made this kind of cloud-like shape. So I'm gonna keep working um, on a deciduous tree and uh, I'm gonna start making some decisions. So to begin with, because I can always draw over my lines, especially if you're using pencil, but you can always draw over the lines that you did before. And because we're not saving this, because this isn't for keeps, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. And so I'm gonna do my cloud shape again. There you go. All right. So by itself, even, even before I start drawing into my canopy right now, just by adding in all this, this detail and all these textures here, it still looks like a tree. Even if we left all of this up here, people would be able to fill in their information. They'd be able to, they'd be able to texture or make guesses or start building stories with their own brains just by looking at this picture because of all the information you've given them with the trunk. But we're gonna make some decisions up here so that um, we're telling the kind of story that we want to tell. So what kind of tree is this going to be? Have you ever gone looking at the different shapes of, um, of leaves when you start looking at trees? It can be so much fun to go on a walk and to start figuring out what the different shapes of trees or uh, leaves are. You can go for a tree walk. 
There's this resource. Um, if you if you are online, you can look up something called the BC Tree Guide. Um, it's available on the um, the Government of Canada website. I want to give the warning. Like I really like it because it's got a lot of different drawings and it has a whole bunch of different information about different local trees. There's a map in this resource so that you can find out um, where you are. Maybe you're not where I am on Coast Salish territory. Um, you can look at the map and you can figure out in relation to where you are. But I do want to caution you that it is an older resource. Um, so they use a lot of um, settler language. They use the Latin names for the trees. Um, they, they don't use um, indigenous names for the trees. And some of the information that they have about the indigenous people they talk about in the past tense um, and, um, and I just want to acknowledge that um, the, uh, the, the nations and uh, Indigenous people who have been taking care of the land since time immemorial, they are still here. Um, and so uh, just be aware of that if you're going to check out this, this uh, cool visual guide. Um, you can print it out and you can take it with you when you're going off and you're checking out different trees um, because it has all that information um, about leaf shape and about um, identifying trees. We just want to be aware when we're using um, resources, the things that are good about it and the things that are not so good about it. So if you were looking at the BC tree guide, you could start asking yourself questions like, okay, is the leaf needle-like? So if the leaf is needles or it has bundles of needles, it's not a deciduous tree. Um, so that's not what we're looking for right now because we want to fill this in right here. Okay, so what does leaf actually look like? Does the leaf have, here, what, what am I gonna draw first? Does the leaf have a, have one of these shapes? And the funny thing is, is that a lot of people call this a leaf shape, but not all trees have this kind of shape. This is, um, I think this is a oak, uh, a kind of oak leaf. I think it's called a shingle oak leaf. Um, but not all oak uh, leaves have this. So if you have ever seen a, um, a white oak, you'll notice that their leaves have this kind of bumpy texture to the outside of them, right? There we go. So this is a white oak. But then the red oak has a kind of toothy leaf to it. And so it's still got that kind of shape to it, but it's got like these teeth, these sharp teeth on the edge of it. And so this is just, this is just an oak tree that I thought of, and it's already got three different kinds of leaf shapes. And so that can be really fun as you start to find these different leaves and try and figure out uh, what kind of um, leaf you found. Another leaf that if you uh, live in the same land as me or on Turtle Island, you may recognize this shape. Uh, there we go. Right? And so maybe you know the maple leaf, right? And so uh, whether that is a vine maple or a Douglas maple or a big leaf, maple and uh, and so I just I only learned the um, English and the the settler words for a lot of the trees around here but you might know these trees by different names and so that's another way of learning and identifying trees um, as you as you walk through and you explore so what are some other kind of leaves that I know um, oh so one of my favorite trees is the horse chestnut tree and, my, and it's my favorite because I like to make my own ink. I like to make my own uh, um, materials that I can uh, paint and draw with. And so if I go and collect the, uh, the nuts, the, the chestnuts from a horse chestnut tree, um, I, can, I can then boil it down and I can make my own ink out of it. And so that's kind of a horse chestnut leaf. And so that looks completely different again from the other leaves that we did. But that's a horse chestnut um, uh, leaf. If you were to see a, a sweet chestnut, so the ones that you actually can, um, I think you can eat the, the chestnuts from a sweet chestnut. You definitely can't eat horse chestnuts. 
um, or at least you shouldn't. <laughs> but you can make ink out of it. And then there's um, the sweet chestnut, which has, again, that kind of toothy uh, shape similar to the oak leaf. And so I use the word toothy. Um, these have kind of smooth or rounded um, leaves to them. This oak leaf is uh, tends to be very, very shiny. In fact, most of the oak leaves tend to be shiny. The, um, the maple leaf has kind of a kind of a leathery feel to it, but then it also has this kind of spiky, um, toothy edge to the outside of it. And so I just drew one, two, three different kinds of tree leaves right here, and they are all a deciduous tree, right? And so knowing that information before I even start drawing allows me to tell a story to give this tree personality. If you were going to draw uh, a picture of your friend, you would want to know what their hair color is or their hair length is, or maybe you know that they recently had a, a haircut and you haven't seen a picture of it, but you want to draw a picture of them recently. And so you, now you know the story and you're going to cut their hair when you draw, draw that picture so that it's shorter. Um, what kind of clothing do they regularly like to wear? Do they like to wear sneakers? Are they always wearing sweaters? Do they prefer shorts over pants? Having all of this information creates detail and creates texture. And so this is a different way of thinking about texture. The texture that you can touch is the is, um, texture that we feel. But also if we think about texture with our eyes, we're adding information so that we're creating dimension, we're creating, um, we're creating a story out of the texture, out of the details that we are adding to our picture. And so we're, we're storytelling with, uh, with our art making. So which one am I going to choose? Which one am I going to choose? I think, I think I'm going to choose the shingle oak just because this is a pretty iconic leaf again. So when I said iconic before, that idea that when um, I said that that's a leaf shape. Most people recognize that as a leaf. So even if they don't know that this is um, an oak leaf, and there are other leaves, uh, depending on where you are in the world, um, that have this kind of shape to it. In fact, some of a whole bunch of these different leaf shapes um, can be similar to different kinds of trees. I just um, I just connected them to trees that are uh, close by to where I am um, on the coast. And so we're going to use uh, what I call a uh, shingle oak leaf, but you, um, you might decide to use a different leaf. So how are we going to show that this, uh, this tree uses shingle oak? Well, there's a couple ways. We could fill, we could color in this whole canopy with nothing but this shape. It probably would take us a while. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do a section, but you can also try that. You could also draw multiple shapes of this tree, right? You could get another piece of paper. And using your icon, right, that really simple, maybe you don't spend as much time on the trunk. You just do a couple of them. Um, they don't have to be perfect, right? There we go. Oh, this one's bigger than the other one. That's okay. And this one has a really big branch over there. That's okay. Okay, so we've got our three branches there. We're going to fill in our cloud-like canopy on all three of them. There you go. And so you can try different techniques for each one here. And this is part of the exploring, right? And so let's do that right now before I even color in this big canopy here. So the first idea we had, and this is gonna be much easier for you if you have a mark making tool um, that is smaller when you're working smaller like this, cause it's easier. Here, I'm gonna do a cloud like this. It's easier to fill something in with small little shapes using a pencil crayon or a pencil than it is with a marker that makes uh, a bigger a bigger shape, a bigger mark. So that's up to you. I'm gonna keep using my marker because that's, that's what I was uh, starting with. The marker's a little dry though. I'm gonna see if this marker's better. Nope, I think that was the best one. Okay, cool, I'm gonna keep going. So this, um, this one right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that idea of we're gonna take our, um, our shingle oak leaf and we're just gonna fill in the whole canopy to see what that looks like. 
are you going to do an ordered pattern where you make them all the same size? Are you going to do them at different sizes? Are you going to do them fast or slow? Are you going to let them go outside of the lines of your canopy? Are you going to fill them in so that they're really densely all together? Or are you gonna put a whole bunch of spaces between them? What are you gonna do? Try it out. Try any of those. Try something different. How can you fill up this canopy just using that shingle oak leaf shape? And there you go. Does that still look like a tree? I feel like it does. It doesn't really look like how leaves grow on trees, but it still tells me the story that that is a tree and that that has that shape of a leaf. And even putting that leaf down there at the bottom, I'm kind of implying that maybe it's not spring, maybe it's fall and the leaves are starting to fall off the tree, right? And so I'm telling all these stories by adding all of these details. Okay, so this one was me just filling it up with that same shape. Um, I was kind of ordered because I used the exact same size. I'm gonna do it here again, but I'm gonna use different shapes of leaves, but I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm just gonna try and fill in um, as much of the canopy, but with different shapes. Or different sizes, sorry. There we go. So I used the same shape, but different sizes and filled in that canopy. What do you notice that's different? Does it still look like a tree? I feel like it still looks like a tree, but it definitely looks different from this one. It still doesn't really look like the way that leaves grow on the tree. This one feels like maybe it's in the summertime because there's all these really big uh, leaves there. It feels like maybe there's some wind where the uh, where the leaves are moving everywhere. So it's a little bit different, this one compared to this one. Okay, let's try one more. And you can try a whole bunch of them. You could keep filling up a page with nothing but these tree icons and that you could just keep coming up with different ways that you could fill in that canopy. It's a noisy, a noisy studio for me today. I have a, I have a, a bunch of crows outside that are all singing. <laughs> What's it like where you are right now? Is it raining? Is the sun shining? Are there birds outside your window? Okay, so how am I going to do this, this last one? So for this one, I just filled it up. This one, I filled it up, but with different sizes. This one, I'm going to start thinking about how um, leaves grow on trees. And so if you've ever seen them, they tend to come out from where the branches are. And so I'm going to start my, um, my shingle oak leaf size by filling in the spaces first around where the branches are. All right, I like that. Okay, I'm going to close off those over there and I'm going to keep doing that over there. Do I need to have more? Do I need to draw more shapes on that? I, I feel like I'm starting to imply, I'm starting to show that that is a tree without needing to even draw very many leaves. But by thinking about how the leaves grew out of those branches, I get something that looks maybe a little bit more realistic or a little bit more like a real life tree versus maybe a cartoon tree or an icon tree or a tree in the fall. Let's keep going. You can leave it like that. You could leave, in fact, here, I, I've got this other one down here. I'm gonna do that again so we can see that. It's good I drew that extra shape. And you can just keep going. Keep drawing different, um, different tree trunks and canopies and keep trying different ideas and ways that you can think of. 
Okay, so I'm gonna keep drawing, but I'm gonna draw out from the leaf, or sorry, from the branch um, in that same kind of shape. When I draw fast, sometimes it's harder for me to keep the same shape. What about for you? You draw it slow or you draw it fast, what do you notice? It's kind of more rounded when I draw it fast. There we go. So I still filled it in like this one, but the branch, sorry, the leaves came out from the branches as if they were growing out from the branches. I'd say this one is actually my favorite. I like this one too, but I like this one because it gives you the same, it gives you the sense of how the leaves grew. It tells you that this, this, uh, the leaves grew out from those branches. That's the information, that's the texture, the information that we added to that. So if I go back to my big tree over here, and I'm gonna take that idea that I really liked over there, and I'm gonna fill this in. But you know what? because I've got my green marker here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna draw it in green so we can see the difference. Okay, so before I draw it all the way in, right, that was this idea here where the leaves were just coming out from those branches there, and I like it. If I wanted to just leave it like that, that would be okay. I would give the information that there was this kind of leaf, right, it, that it was a spruce oak or any tree that has that, that leaf shape. And that would be okay. That would, that would, that would be a good amount of information. But because I liked this one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep drawing it. But what I'm going to do a little bit differently than what I did on this one is I'm going to take that se that second idea I had here. One, two, whoops, three, four. I'm going to take that second idea that I had where I'm going to start changing up the size of the leaf depending on where it is in my canopy. Let's Let's keep drawing. If you're still drawing just the icons, if you're still even just thinking about what a tree looks like, if you're just watching me today, that's all okay. You don't have to be making, but it's fun to be asking questions as we watch, right? Ask yourself questions. If I was going to be drawing right now, what kind of mark making tool would I want to use? Does it need to be green? What, sh what size leaf would I draw here? What shape of leaf? would I want to draw with? Is, do I even want to draw the oak leaf shape? Oh, do I want to draw a line through my leaves? Do I want it to be more detailed? Do I want to go fast? Do I want to go slow? How do I feel while taking the time to draw all of these little leaves? Am I bored? Am I excited to see what happens? Ask yourself all those questions. Ask the people around you who are making. Ask the noisy crows outside your window. <laughs> if you're lucky enough to have some crows where you are. What are the local birds near you? What would the birds think about this tree? Would the birds hang out in the tree that you're drawing right now? Or that I'm drawing right now? That can be part of the story that you're telling with all of the texture that you're adding to your tree. Okay, I'm just gonna color for one more, maybe one more minute. So I might not get the whole thing, but that's okay. 
we want to we want to keep exploring. Might start going a little faster, and then we can see the difference between when I draw big, or sorry, when I draw fast, and when I draw slow, because these ones were kind of slower. Don't be afraid of white space as well. So when you're drawing, you don't have to color in every inch. Sometimes it can be really fun to see what happens. But if you don't want to color in every inch, every um, centimeter or millimeter of your drawing, you want to leave some white space, see what happens. I'm going to do that. I'm going to plan for some white space right here. I still want to go in the direction from where the leaves came out from the tree, but that's where I'm gonna leave my white space right there. Just continuing to draw that shape. Doesn't have to be perfect, but coming out from the tree, so outwards, spreading out like that. I said I would draw just for one more minute. 10 more seconds. Oh, can I go fast enough? Fast, fast, fast. <laughs> you don't have to panic. You can keep drawing. Even, even when I stop, um, when I finish, you can, you, can keep, uh, you can keep drawing. You do not have to stop when I stop. You don't even have to be drawing a tree. Maybe some of the ideas that we're talking about right now, if you're thinking about textures and you wanted to try drawing something else, what happens? What happens when you take some of these textures that we learned today for trees and you apply them to other things? What if you were drawing a picture of a dog? What's the shape of the fur on the dog that you're going to draw? Okay, there you go. So I used I used something that I explored over here, the different the different ways of filling in the canopy. And then I brought it over here. I did something else. I, I changed the color. Right? And so that tells a story as well. That tells a story that it's probably spring. Excuse me, it's probably spring or summer because um, these kind of leaves, these kind of shapes, they, they change color at different times of the year. And if you have different colors of markers or crayons, what happens if you would start coloring in some of these? Maybe the outline is all green, but you color in some of the insides as yellow or orange or pink or purple. What changes? What information are you giving the person who is looking at your picture about your drawing? What story are you telling by adding texture to your drawing? And think about those words that I was talking about before when you're starting to describe those shapes, right? So smooth and toothed, right? The tooth, the idea that there's sharp, jagged tooths or uh, teeth, around the tooths, <laughs> teeth around the outside of that leaf. Um, is it rough? Is it leathery? If you've ever felt leather, does it feel leather, leathery versus soft? So leathery could have like um, um, some like spines and creases on it. It could feel thick and um, still feel kind of smooth, but also um, have like these, these cells or like the hairs on them. Or how, how does it feel when you touch it? It's, it's gonna give you information that you, um, that you might not have had before you touched it. And then it's going to inform um, your drawing when you start when you start putting it on the page. And you can do exactly what I did here, which was you can you can make your your trunk, and then you can um, and and if you want, you know, you could cut it out closer. I did this so that there was still room over here for my uh, my trunk. But as you're exploring, you could make one kind of trunk. especially if you're not sure the different ways to draw um, different trunks for different trees. If you haven't gone out for your tree walk yet, it might be really rainy where you are right now, or maybe there isn't a lot of trees uh, where you're making right now, or just maybe you just haven't had a chance to go out for a walk for a while. Um, maybe you're stuck inside. Maybe 
It's just, it's just been a while. And so if you can get out for a walk, that's great. And if you can't, you have access to the internet. You could go, uh, you could check out that tree guide that I told you about called the BC Tree Guide. Or you could go on um, any kind of search engine and you could just type in different kinds of trees or tree identification guide. Oh, this is why I like ripping paper. Cutting paper can take a really long time. Just to show you, just to show you what I was talking about, about being able to draw one trunk Ooh, and then try different things. <laughs> oh, it's taking so long. And I cut pretty fast too. I like to rip paper, not just because I'm impatient, but because I like, um, I like how it looks. I like how ripped paper can have rough edges. So when we were talking about, um, texture when you are going to rip something out if you're going to be making um a tree picture what changes when you cut out your tree versus uh ripping the paper can you can you give it that feeling of um rip or sorry a rough bark by ripping it what if you don't draw it first and you just try and um have a rough ripped out page beforehand and then you use those rip marks on the outside to um to inspire you to make a tree from that rough um that rough edge well, if i can cut this out fast enough maybe i'll try that as well that's i'm really excited about that idea remember that's the cool thing about exploring sometimes we are doing one thing and we have one idea and it makes us think of something else that we wouldn't have tried unless we had tried that first thing okay so there we go and I still have that canopy, so I could bring that back if I wanted to put my puzzle piece back together. I could, ooh, I could take that canopy. Could go, okay, that goes there. That goes there. And then that one goes ooh, underneath there. <laughs> there we go. Is that right? No. <laughs> there, that's where that goes. And then this one, this one goes there. There you go. And so I can put it back together if I wanted to cut it like that. And that's kind of interesting. It feels more textured now, right? Because the paper is coming up, right? And so it's got all these cool edges now. But I can also just take my canopy away. And now I'm back to the beginning. And I can start again. So maybe now I want to try out my, um, my horse chestnut leaf, right? What would it look like if I was going to draw my canopy again to fill it in with horse chestnut leaves or with a different kind of oak leaf or with a maple leaf right and you can just keep going and then you can turn the page over and you can do it again and that's something else that's really cool about exploring if you like if you come up with something that you like in one way if you isolate it if you rip it out if you cut it out then all of a sudden you have this opportunity to be able to try it in all these different ways uh, just by putting another piece of paper behind it. Okay, so I said one last thing um, in the last minute before I wrap up today was um, what happens if we rip a piece of paper and we have that rough edge and then that's what we make the tree out of. And so if I am given the opportunity to rip paper, I'm always going to take it, right? I'm always gonna rip paper if I, if I can. Okay, so I'm not going to be really precious about it. I'm going to take that kind of shape of the trunk again, at the bottom. Right, so there's the bottom of my trunk. And then I'm going to go. And that's because we had already figured out that trees have kind of a rough bark to them. Right, and so if we hadn't done that exploration and, and come up with that, um, that way of describing a tree, both with our words, but also visually, maybe we wouldn't know that. Maybe we'd always cut out our trees. And so we'd always go, well, why do they, why do they never quite look like trees? And, uh, and it's because we hadn't been thinking about texture. We hadn't been thinking about a rough texture of a tree. I think I'm just going to do one more branch over here. Maybe it comes out to the side into two 
the end. There we go. See how much faster this is than cutting? <laughs> this is why I really, well, not one of the reasons why. There you go. And so now we have this rough, right? And I didn't really plan this. It's very organic. It's very random of how the rough is on the outside. And then we can start taking in those ideas that we learned over here by going and drawing in, right, our bark. I'm still going to have my big hole in the center of it, jagged because that's where the, the bark has started to grow around. Maybe it's really dark inside the hole. You can't even see unless you get really close up to it. And there we go. I call this scribbles, but I call it bark. Because I'm thinking about it, right? I'm not just doing whatever. I'm, all, I'm still following the line of the bark going up the branch um, rather than just uh, scribbling in whatever direction. So it looks like I'm scribbling, but really I'm just adding a whole bunch of rough texture. And there we go, right? So there's one way to do my rough texture just by ripping the paper. And then this one I, I drew first, right? There's not one way that's better than the other, but now we can take that um, and just like we had over here, and we can put it with those different, uh, those different backgrounds or take a whole nother piece of paper, right? I think it's better if we went like that. There we go, right? There's no one right way to do it. And now we can color that in. Thank you so much for joining me for week three of textures. It was, uh, it's been a really fun couple of weeks. These are only just a few ways that you can explore textures. Uh, we've just scratched the surface and we did three hours of exploring um, uh, textures. If you have other ideas you want to share with us, you can always uh, comment if you have permission to share um, on any of our other platforms. We will also be back, or by we, I will be back next week with a special Saturday at 11 a.m. is when the video will premiere, and we're going to be doing a Halloween special. And so we'll be exploring a couple of different um, ways to make art and to uh, celebrate Halloween, but we will also still be using that lens. We'll still be thinking about textures because this month we are exploring textures. So come and join me next week, um, a Saturday the 24th at 11 a.m. is when we'll be live um, or anytime after that to check out our Halloween video. And then we'll have um, one more session at the end of the month on the 31st, where we're going to be doing um, Drag Story Hour. And you can find more information about that on our website um, at artstarts.com or on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash artstarts. So um, as I always like to finish up my workshop, I'm going to leave the camera running for a little bit while I clean up my space, because part of practicing respect is that we always make sure that we clean up and everything that I made today is going to be going into the recycling bin because nothing is for keeps so we can always make it all over again. Thank you so much for joining me and I can't wait to see you next week when we explore Halloween. See you soon.